Hi. Apologies for the huge delay since the last video. I've had an extremely busy time at work and something has had to give. Unfortunately, that is videos. However, we should be able to get back to a normal video schedule now. And today we are looking at the Exxon T3A once again. And so far, I think this is the best value for money soldering station that we've looked at with the highest performance once combined with the T245 type handpiece. I think this is really quite a nice setup. However, the one criticism I did have of this system is I thought the stand was a little bit poor quality compared to the build quality of the unit itself, which seemed to be quite nicely designed and pretty robust. The stand just wasn't up there with any of the quality. It's a bit of folded metal. Uh, even the, the dish here didn't quite sit quite as nicely as it could have done compared to how nicely they have designed this system. So what I've noticed is since that video, they have actually released a new stand and this one looks much higher quality. Let's have a look at it on AliExpress. So here it is on AliExpress from the Easy 100 Fix store, which is where I actually bought this stand from, and also the solder station. Both of them arrived very quickly, so I'll put links to these in the description down below. But the stand itself is selling for about $35. And so I think this is a much better setup, much more like what we'd expect for a JBC type handpiece. So first of all, we've got the much nicer cradle. This fits the handpiece perfectly. I think it's basically a clone of that part on the JBC stands and that is electrically connected to the lead at the back, which plugs into the back of the unit, and that allows it to go into sleep mode the moment that the metal collar here makes contact with this. And because the cartridges are so quick to heat up, you can literally drop the temperature right down to something quite low, like 150 degrees, to really extend the life of the tip. The longer you have the tip sitting at operating temperature, the more that tip is oxidizing, and the lower time that plating will actually last. We've got an all-metal area here, and so when you want to change the tips, as opposed to having to use a silicone pad, and this didn't really have any storage either for tips, you can just put the uh, tip in here, use that to pull out the tip in use, and then you can put the new one in, slide it in, and then use this to push it all the way home. So very similar to the JBC system, and I think that's much better. That's more like what you'd expect for one of these hand pieces. The whole thing is actually made from uh, plastic, but it's quite nicely finished. Obviously these parts are metal, and then there's an area for a brass wool pad, and it has this silicone area here. That's just to stop splashes of solder when you're cleaning your tip. Now obviously uh, we don't have an area for a sponge as well as that, but I think you can remove this silicone pad and remove the brass pad and put a sponge in there instead if that's your preferred method. I actually quite like to have both available so it's a shame they haven't got the sponge at the front here, but um, I think that's about as good as we can hope for. So quite a nice design. It looks like uh, this has been designed in mind to attach to something else, but I haven't found what that is yet, so I don't really know what's going on there. But yeah, quite a nice um, setup with this connected up to the station. Now what I have noticed when looking around is no one seems to sell a set that has this particular handpiece cradle with the soldering station that uses the T245 handpiece. In fact, the only place that did have it was selling it for some silly price. It's much cheaper just to buy this cradle for $35 delivered, uh, as well as buying this station with the original metal stand. And if you were thinking about buying one of these systems, personally, I would avoid the T12 and the 936 handpieces because as we found, all of the high performance from JBC soldering stations seems to come from the cartridges. So even though this is a, a different system, we seem to be getting the same high performance as we've seen on a genuine JBC station. So I think this is the setup to get. However, when I was looking around, I did also notice they've released the T3B, which is a very slightly different version of the station itself. But there's two versions available. There's one for the T. 210 handpiece which is a slightly smaller one than the 245 and they've also got one for the micro cartridges the T115. Uh, what you'll notice on the illustration here the connector at the front has now gone there seems to be some kind of power button and all of the connection to the handpiece cradle is through one lead at the back here and then our handpiece actually plugs into the back. Now why they haven't done that for the T245 handpiece I don't know because that looks a lot more similar to a genuine JBC, um, but it does mean that you will have to buy a different station if you want to use the T115 or the T210 hand pieces. And on that note, on the T3A you can actually use the T12 and the 936 hand pieces without any kind of modification. You just plug in 
um, the connector into here and it will detect that it's a different handpiece and drive it accordingly. However, uh, a word of warning, there are various different types of T12 handpiece. Some of them have sense resistors in different places, so you might need to pick the right one, but it will detect it and it will be able to drive it. Uh, unfortunately, um, they haven't made the T210 and the 115 handpieces compatible with this original base station. So now if you want to use the smaller handpieces, you do need to buy that different station that doesn't have this multi-pin connector at the front, it has a power button, and at the back is actually where the multi-pin connector that then goes off to the cradle that then feeds the handpiece. But that's probably a slightly better layout because that means you can have this slightly out of the way and then your handpiece connector just goes into the back of here, so a much less messy wiring configuration. And a quick message from our video sponsor, JLC PCB, where you can get all different types of PCBs made, one, two, four, and six layer in FR4 and also aluminium PCBs. And they also offer PCB assembly with even more components available now. So up to 80,000 components to choose from, including through hole parts now as well. So it's not just limited to surface mount parts. You can get connectors and all that kind of stuff soldered onto your PCB using their assembly service. So don't forget to visit JLC PCB for your PCB needs. Now one other thing that I did want to cover in this video is updating the firmware on this device because the company has actually been releasing updates for the firmware on quite a regular basis. The firmware update is done through the USB-C port on the side. So let's try and go through that procedure. It does involve installing some software onto your PC. Uh, but then it communicates with this directly and does the updates for you. So if you go to the manufacturer's website, jcprogrammer.com, and go to Download Center, at the bottom here is the Exxon Platform Installation Package. So that's what we need to download and install. So once it's installed, you can start the software, and then you go to the Tool Up section here, which has that little rocket symbol. You may need to change the language in the software, which you can do from the Setting tab here and then install the FT232 driver. So click Drive Install. And then the next thing to do is plug in the solder station. Now make sure you do this with the AC connector unplugged. It sounds like it actually powers that USB port which may damage the USB port on your PC. So make sure it's completely disconnected and then just plug in the USB-C connector and it should detect it and start updating the firmware. And there we go, that's all complete. New version 1.22, I think I was using 1.14, something like that before, so quite a few updates there. For those curious, this is the change log on accentupdates.github.io, and it looks like primarily these updates have been optimizing the control loops for heating. So they've got an update here for the 936, one here at 1.19 for the T245, so that should impact um, our soldering iron that we're using here and more recently the T12, and then it looks like they've done some GUI updates um, to change the user interface slightly. So compared with last time, I think they have improved the user interface slightly. If we go through the settings, for example, um, it wasn't always clear which button you needed to press to change a function, for example, but now if we go to the first setting here, dormancy temperature, you click it to press OK, and now it actually says push the knob to switch options. I think originally I would have rotated the knob to switch between these two, but actually you press the knob and then you use the dial to change the setting. And then it's quite clear this button is OK and this button is back. So I think they have improved the user interface slightly. There's still a little bit of a weird translation issue, I think, with some of these settings. But other than that, it seems to work OK. Uh, now, most of the things were to do with um, the control loop for the heating. And what I did notice is when I powered this up, there was a bit more of an overshoot than I'd seen before. If I remove the handpiece from the cradle, setting is 295, and it's overshot there by quite a lot, which is actually a little bit more similar to the behavior of the real JBC system. It does tend to overshoot. That will improve the responsiveness of the system, uh, but obviously it's not ideal if you've got highly sensitive components or anything like that but um, that will actually make the system a bit more responsive, get the tip up to temperature quicker and make it appear like the tip has even more power than it would have done before. So that may suit some people. Unfortunately, you can't change that setting on the 
at Ursa Icon Station, we were able to choose kind of the overshoot, low, medium and high. It would be nice to have that on there for those that care a little bit more about specific applications, but I think this still should work pretty nicely. And so I think that's it for today's video. I'll put links to these products in the description down below. We've also got some more solder stations to take a look at, some lower cost ones which may be more suitable to hobbyist budgets. We've also got a nitrogen station to take a look at. And we also really need to get back to doing some projects. I've got a load of projects which have just stalled because I haven't had enough time to do them, but we will be getting back to those. And if you have got any thoughts about any topics that you would like covering, so general technical topics as well about general electronics, uh, leave any thoughts in the comment section down below and we'll also try and get to those. Also, just in the background there, that's just reminded me, we are going to try and design a unisolder type station, but it won't be a universal soldering station. It will actually just be dedicated to JBC hand pieces because I think these are really giving us the highest performance. So that should be quite an exciting design to get going as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for my Patreon supporters and also for sticking with me after having a little bit of a break there from videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.